everyone, it's Lorelai. As you can see, I have made a lot of changes to my game. I'm also over on the left side so that you can see any runtime actions. I noticed in a few of my videos that there were kind of important runtime actions over here that you couldn't see because I was in the way. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, so there's a lot of changes. I'm going to go through each of these changes in future videos. Today, what I wanted to do is finally go over my party AI. I'm finally a little confident with uh, how I set it up. I think it's a very good base foundation uh, to grow on and it's it's working for now. It's working in my test runs. Uh, so let's see what it looks like. Ah! <laughs> it's actually not that bad. Okay. It's actually not that bad for, for, you know, an AI. It's not, it's not as terrible as you would think. So it's actually set up into two sections that I can see in my mind, but I, I don't expect you guys to be able to understand. Uh, it's, it's two sections. It's basically if there's a locked target, then I want you to attack that locked target. If there's not a locked target and you're aggressive, which I don't think we've talked about yet, um, then I just want you to find an enemy. So let's see how this works in the game. Uh, so ignore ignore that. <laughs> That's still something that I'm fixing. Okay, so here what we have is them not fighting at all. They're not fighting at all. Then what I can do is click one and they should start attacking. There they go. Yeah. I think I have to click twice and that's fine. That's, I think that was intended. <laughs> so here they go. They're attacking the lock target. And if I switch the lock target, they attack the new lock target. Um, they're running away. That was another thing. They're running away because these are all ranged characters. So I didn't want them to stay in melee for too long. I can right click and they'll run back to me because there's no more locked target. And another thing I added was an aggressive state. So if I press F, they get all glowy. I might remove that, I don't know. <laughs> but they get all glowy and they can attack wh whoever they want, whoever the heck they want. And um, I can also lock. And even if they're aggressive, they will lock onto a target. And I can press G and they're not aggressive anymore, but there is a lock target. So if I right click F and then G, they'll run back to me, okay? So, wow, lots going on. A lot has happened. <laughs> I, I think I'm happy with it. I think I, I fixed most of the bugs and it's, and it's okay. Uh, a lot of these gray actions here aren't entirely necessary, but they helped me to clean up all of these conditions. Uh, so before I had one condition line, one link that had a ton of rules on it and it was just a mess. It was a mess in my head and I didn't like it. So I separated it into these gray boxes so that I can see exactly what was going on. Uh, the yellow boxes are when they move or when they look for an enemy. And then the blue boxes are them just like attacking or in, uh, or in cooldown, okay? So here we have attack enemy, which is if they're aggressive and then attack locked if they have a locked target. So maybe I can try to go through this <laughs> step by step. It's a little complicated and I have to also remember how exactly I did it. <laughs> so first we have go to locked, right? And we're under Deirdre follower, but technically Nisha is the one that we see because Deirdre's Deirdre is the playable character right now. So let's let's look at Nisha instead, although it's basically the same thing. So we have go to locked. Okay, this is a common action. Um, this is if I've pressed A, which is left click. I've pressed A and there is a target in my locked slash aggression field of vision. This locked slash aggression field of vision is the entire screen. Okay, that is the entire screen. And then I have this lock loop. It's set to off. If it's off, then you can go to locked attack. These loops I add to almost every common action. Otherwise, I end up getting stuck in this forever loop. Uh, and so these help me. These switches help me. So we have go to locked attack. So first what I have is release the enemy group lock. And that is because if I change who I clicked on, if I change the locked target, I want them to release their previous lock so that they can get a new lock. Okay, uh, I found in this engine, it's possible to have multiple locks in one group, uh, which is a mess. I feel like that shouldn't be, but that's okay. So we have to release it to get a new one. Then I turn on the lock loop that's on now so that uh, there's no there's no looping and then execute 
object self. I have no runaway, okay? Because no runaway, eventually, after so much testing, I added no runaway, like, last. Okay, all of these gray things in the middle, I added to the logic last. Uh, so no runaway, as you can see, is visually in the middle of all of this, um, but it also has most of the links out. So from No Runaway, <laughs> which is an awful name from it, uh, but they aren't running away, that's the point, I guess. So they aren't running away. We've got this conditional. So first we're gonna see if there's a target circle. This one is if there's no target. So we've got no target exists, or if a target does exist, does exist, <laughs> um, right? So if a target does exist, but I'm not locked onto anyone, then we're going to lock on a lock target. And then this one is if I do have a lock target, then go straight to one of these two. <laughs> okay, so no run away, we can either go to no target exists, which means no lock, right? Um, or we can lock onto someone if a lock exists or we already have a lock target, so we are going to either move to the lock target or turn to the lock target. And these are two different things that I needed to separate to get the look that I wanted. So move to lock target is if the locked target is out of my range. So I'm pretty sure this is, uh, yeah, in my ranged field of vision. If the target circle is not in my range, then I have to move to that lock. Um, which I turned on free movement because sometimes they would get stuck and it was really annoying. So free movement is on and then they run to uh, the lock target. This should be prioritized lock target. <laughs> um, and they have a, a move speed of 100%. If they are already in range of the lock target, I didn't want them moving, okay? Because so, what ended up happening was they would be in range of the lock target, but then every time they did their attack and redo this logic sequence, they would move forward a little bit, which was really annoying because I did not want them to move forward a little bit. I wanted them to stay still, <laughs> but I needed them to still move toward the nearby object um, because otherwise they were sometimes facing away from the the object and still attacking them even though they weren't facing them and it was just a mess it didn't look right it was kind of stupid looking so so i still needed turn toward or move toward there, there's no turn toward there's just a move toward so we've got this turn to lock target action that has no speed okay that has no speed and then with these three, I have these little conditionals that um, are basically band-aids <laughs> just in case something happens when they're in the middle of one of these actions. Maybe their enemy died or I don't know, I turned off the lock or something like that. I needed them to be able to get free, to get out. So a lot of these are just like, if um, there's not a target circle in ranged, even though I'm at turn to lock target, now I can move to the lock target. Uh, you know, maybe the slime ran away from me or something when I was just about to turn to it. Uh, or I've got, I don't have a lock target anymore, or um, the target circle is not in, um, my range, right? Uh, so it's lock on lock target again. So a, a lot of these are just fail safes, I guess, <laughs> just in case, because they kept getting stuck, but they're not they're not stuck anymore. So that's that's a nice thing. So after they've completed this cycle, lock on lock target, it should be like lock on clicked target instead of locked target. So like clicked, lock on the clicked target. And this one is looking for uh, I think we talked about this last time. This one's locking on to the clicked instance ID. So whoever I clicked on, we have that instance ID stored into a var variable and uh, we are locking on to whoever has that variable, whoever has that ID. And also a release lock just in case. <laughs> so once we've locked on, once we've moved to the lock target, and once we have turned to the lock target, then we go and uh, we attack. Attack locked. Uh, so I've got 0.1 seconds because sometimes they need that tenth of a second to turn, uh, to turn to the target, and then and if they've um, discovered that target circle in their range. Okay, and then we've just got attack. Nothing special here. Uh, although he is firing a bullet, so that's that's a whole thing. <laughs> I guess we can talk about that later. He's firing a bullet, and then I also have this variable 
called Three a- Three Attacks Before Run. And every time they attack, it adds one to this self variable. Three attacks before run. Okay? <sighs> Just keep that in mind. <laughs> I'm pretty sure this attack enemy also has um three attacks before run okay all right so that's the locked target uh sequence if there's no locked target if i've pressed f let's go down here i think that's this one turn on aggressive so i've got x is pressed or f on the keyboard if f is pressed um and aggressive is already off okay that's just to help the looping then you're going to turn on your aggressive self switch to on Okay, you are now aggressive. And I turn on this little like color thing just to show that they're that they're aggressive. And then we've got execute object action aggressive on. Uh, they could also have gone into no runaway probably the same as the other one. But I think I just did a little shortcut uh, to aggressive on. So this is if they are aggressive and um, even this locked thing checks if there is not a lock target, but they are aggressive, it will go to aggressive on. And from aggressive on, we have a very similar sequence. So first we have find an enemy, and this goes to find an enemy if there's actually an enemy on the screen. And for uh, and to check that, I have go to locked aggression. I have stuck here, but I'm actually not using stuck with this one. I should rename that. Uh, but go to locked slash aggression. So this take this looks at the entire screen. So if there's an enemy in the entire screen and there's not an enemy already in my range to go attack, okay, so that's off, then go find one, go find an enemy. Here we have just like move toward a nearby object. I've got prioritized locked objects just cause, um, just in case I already have like a locked target. You never know, right? <laughs> you never know when they are accidentally uh, in another the square here um, based off of whatever happens when they're in another action. So find an enemy. Okay, we're going to find one. And once we have discovered that enemy in range, once we have reached range with them, we're going to turn to them, which is that turn, but only very quickly. So no movement speed. And then we're going to attack. And then we go to attack cooldown, which takes us back to the original sequence. <laughs> takes us back to the original sequence. So we're gonna, from attack cooldown, we are going to wait. I have him waiting for half a second. So that's this, this doesn't do anything. Most of these gray things don't actually do anything. They're, again, just so I can keep track of what all of these links are doing. So we're gonna wait half a second because I don't want him spamming his attacks. Uh, and we can either run away or not run away. Run away is if there have been more than three attacks there have been more than three attacks because remember attack enemy and attack locked are all adding a variable to how many times they've attacked, okay? And there is an enemy in their melee. That's follow FOV is, is their melee range. So there's an enemy up on their butt and they don't want to be, I don't want him to be, you know, so close to the enemy because he's a ranged character. So this is set to run away. Okay, and this is basically first release lock because I noticed if there was a lock target, it would get a little messy. So I'm releasing the lock and then I'm running away from at the enemy group in like any direction. <laughs> I am running the fuck away. I am also resetting that variable so that we can do that again later. I had it before so that they would run away any time there was an, an enemy in their in their melee range, uh, but I found that they were running away way too often. So I set it to three attacks. So you can attack three times and then run away if you have to. I felt like that was a good, um, that was a good fix, I guess. Okay, uh, so then we have two things off of run away. We have in wall fix, because <laughs> sometimes they would just like freaking run into a wall and get stuck. So if 0.4 seconds pass is the total arbitrary number here, and I've, I'm have i in contact with a tiles wall detection up and down, I've noticed uh, they haven't really gotten stuck left and right. So we'll see if I need to add those. Uh, then we're gonna do this in wall fix which is basically free movement is now on and we're going to run toward the playable circle. This has helped them um, whenever they get stuck somewhere. 
And then from that, we've got, if I finally found the playable circle, then I can go back to turn back after running. If I'm not stuck, uh, basically after running away, I wait for five seconds. So that's just our 0.5 seconds. <laughs> so this is basically half a second of running away. And then we're going to turn back. We're going to release lock again. Again, I just did this as a fail safe. And then we're going to lock an object. We're going to lock onto the same object that um, is clicked on if such an object exists. We're going to lock onto that object here. And then we are going to move toward uh, that enemy. And from there, we go straight to... I've got a tenth of a second in case we have to turn toward the enemy. Uh, we go back to no runaway, which checks if there's a lock target or there's no lock target or if I'm aggressive or whatever. It checks all of the things. It's like right in the middle of the sequence. Whew. <laughs> what a mouthful. I think that I got everything. I think I missed aggressive off. So this is just if... I'm aggressive, but then I haven't seen any enemy group in the screen. Then I'm going to turn aggressive off and go back to following. I think that's it. I think we're good. Does that make sense? Sorry, I talked so fast. I didn't want this to be a really long video. Uh, let's double check my common actions. I can turn off aggressive by pressing right click. Um, or if they're off camera or if they're buried in a wall, I just added that just in case. Um, yeah, and we're just turning off some loop, turning off some switches, deleting filter effects. And, and we've got some more clear targets here. These are, again, just for fail saves. <laughs> I might have to double check to see what these do. They might not be relevant anymore, but I can check that later. I'll check that later. So what do you think? What do you think of my party AI? It's not um, the greatest. It's not the greatest. <laughs> um, again, ignore that. Uh, but you know what? It's it's fine. You know, it's it's working. They're attacking. They're going to run away because they attacked a few times. I think Belle might be a little stuck. She might have tried running away, but she's stuck in between. I don't know why Fiona's running away. There, there we go. Um, so it's like, it's like fine. Nietzsche is a little wonky right now, but he's good. He's good. I think he got stuck in the wall, so he ran to me. That's a good thing. And then if I press F, they just attack whoever. And if I clear the target, they'll attack whoever. And they just have a, a, a grand old time. And then Dear Gem, my main character, can just smack. Smack, smack, smack. Okay. I think that's it. I think that's all I wanted to... Um, guess I need to fix that. But, but I think that's all I wanted to mention. I hope you enjoyed this episode. <laughs> and I will talk to you guys later. Bye!